I've seen, believe, achieve. This is former UFC middleweight champion of the world, Michael Bisping. Paddy the Baddy here, and you're listening to Combat Sports UK. And you're watching. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Combat Sports UK YouTube channel. I'm Jared Miller, and it's a pleasure to be joined this afternoon by Octagon Bantamweight contender and the ever smiling Gustavo Lopez. Gustavo, how are we today, mate? Amazing, man. Absolutely amazing. I uh, had a great workout today. I've been in Bratislava for the past three days. Came in a little bit early to get acclimated to the time change. You know, I'm one of the few fighters that are coming from Vegas. So, one well, of the only fighters fighting from the States. So, it's it's a lot different. Like, usually all the other fighters, they fly in them out um, on the 4th. So, it's not that big of a yeah. deal because it's not that big of a time change. But for me, it's a huge. So, I, go, I, come, I come out here and just make sure everything's good. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you for coming on today. Obviously, you have a, have a very busy schedule at the minute. Um, for those that don't know, you're going to be taking on Beno Adamia. I hope I've pronounced that right. Octagon 47. Um, how are those preparations going and how has the fight camp gone as a whole? Uh, as a whole, it's been great. Uh, weight came down, feeling sharp. It just absolutely feels amazing right now. So it's the last two weeks. So really, we just hitting pads, moving around a little bit. And then next week is just just losing the weight. <laughs> so yeah. Not much else to do. The bad part, basically. Mm -hmm. I've also seen on your socials um, a couple of weeks ago, you've been training with former opponent, uh, Marab. How did that come about and how uh, beneficial was that for you? Uh, I trained Marab for quite a while when I'm in Las Vegas. Uh, he trains at 10 Planet where I train at, so we always get some rounds in and going with, you know, the number one contender in the world. Yeah. And him saying him saying that I'm doing that I feel amazing and that you know I'm gonna do great. It's it's a definite confident booster. Yeah, definitely. And obviously, as you said, the fights over here, um, over the Atlantic in Slovakia. How do you find uh, coming over to Europe and fighting? Because obviously, it's a lot different from where you fought before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little different. Not nothing crazy. At the end of the day, it's a ring. It's a it's an octagon. You come inside. There's another person on the other side of the case that's trying to take your head off so we yeah. just you just fight after yeah. that it's just you know it's nice to, usually i spend time a little bit more time out here i'll schedule my flights to be postponed and i just travel around and kind of enjoy the i never thought i was going to be out in europe and now i'm, I'm more yeah. out here than ever yeah definitely and, and looking at adamia as an opponent how do you see him maybe from a technical point of view it looks like he has some decent striking, but I feel like everybody I fight has it's is gonna are gonna have some decent striking. Looks like he has some some kind of wrestling, um, but I also saw that he he been getting taken down a lot too from his from his opponents. I feel like I'm a better striker than the opponents that he's been fighting, and I know I'm way better grappler than anyone that he fought. So yeah, if he gets to when it gets to the ground, is you know it's gonna be an eye opener for him, and we you know I'm just gonna go out there and do what I do. Definitely. And he's making his um, Octagon debut. I've spoken to fighters in the past who have been in a similar situation to you where their opponent's making their promotion debut. Has that uh, made it difficult to find like fight footage or to prepare at all? A little bit, a little bit. Uh, there's not that much footage of him. Some of it's old. And so this, who, you know, I'm sure he got a lot better than the ones that I've seen so far. But like I'm training with, like you said, Marab and the guys in Extreme Couture and then Cody um, Samen is like, I'm just training with some of the best in the world. And, you know, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys and then it makes it makes me feel a lot better going against, you know, some people that are just getting into this scene, you know. The, the level of competition and the level of training that I've had, it's just, it's just different. Yeah, I mean, he has seemed to improve. He went on a bit of a losing streak around the 29 team time, but he's um, unbeaten since, I think, three w three mm -hmm. wins and a draw. So uh, do you see anything from that? Do you think he might take any any confidence from that? Um, I, I'm sure I'm sure he is. The last, you know, going on a little win streak always helps people's confidence. But the bad thing about that is when you're going against, you know, to a di different level against someone else, like you might feel really confident until you get hit and taken down and then you can't get up and then it's going to be an issue because my my fighting style is that I love to drown people. I like putting people in deep waters and then when they think they're going to they're getting out, pull them deeper and deeper. So, yeah. I'm excited for and it. 
obviously you are coming into the fight off the back of that stoppage loss to Jonas Magad last time out. You know, a difficult night at the office, but mm. um, is there anything that you've learned from that that you think you can now take into this next fight coming up? I think it was just being more prepared, being, yeah. you know, leaving no turn, uh, stones unturned. I, I knew I was getting ready. You know, it just, it's, it's the fight game, you know, little gloves, little gloves, people get hit. It happens. Yeah. It's just nothing really changes for me. I felt like I was doing great. It's just, you know, the small gloves. <laughs> yeah. It just sometimes happens, doesn't it, mate? And, uh, you know, yeah. looking back across your career as a whole, Obviously, before Octagon, you fought in, you know, big promotions like Combat America and, and the UFC. Focusing on the latter, for example, how would you rate your time in there? Because obviously, as you've previously mentioned, you fought some very elite competition during your time in it. And has that tough competition now put you in better stead? Of sure, of course. Uh, you know, fighting with the people that I fought, it's like it's it is a different level. These guys are the best in the world you know, hands down. And then Octagon is an upcoming promotion. They're doing an amazing job. Yeah. But they're, bring, they're bringing in new people, you know, some people with some experience, some people without it. So I feel like I'm a really bad matchup with against anyone in the world, regardless of the promotion. Yeah, fair enough, mate. And, and looking back towards that question, your time in uh, Combat America, obviously, where you were the bouncing weight champion and then moving into the UFC. How was that whole time period for you? And is that where you think you learned the most in your MMA career? Yes. Uh, I think when I fought for Combate, it was it was actually a weird situation when it was supposed to be a one-off fight. Went in there, won, and then they enjoyed, they liked me, so I kept winning, and then I was just went on a win streak. Yeah. Fought for their title, uh, controversial loss, and then had a short-notice fight to fight for the world title again. Lost a split decision against a guy that I felt that I won. And that's coming off of a one day, one day uh, notice call for a world title, and I had to cut like twenty some, like twenty three pounds to make weight that night. Yeah, you know, to be able to do those, those kind of things and compete against the best in the world, you know, it just and the rematch with that, uh, I think it was all die. His name is, and went out there, smoked him, went out, went out there, won the t- won their title, fought again, defended it. Uh, against Joey Raquette, smoked him, and it's just the confidence that it gave me. It just it's incredible. And then going into the UFC, I think I got too excited with my hands that I forgot what I'm really good at. It's being on the ground and wrestling and putting it all together. Because when I put it all together, I know I'm one of the best in the world. Yeah. Okay. I, I, was, I was interested after leaving the UFC. Why Octagon? What uh you know what attracted you as a promotion? Actually, my manager ha- already had some connections over here. Right. Uh, some of some other fighters from uh, Danny Rubinstein's group fights for Octagon. So yeah. I think it just it was just the right opportunity at the right time, you know. Um, I got the guy's name. The uh, there was just uh, I think I think my guard got hurt a jaw, it broke his jaw or something like that, mm-hmm. and I was the replacement. You know, and Magard and I are actually managed by the same promotion, the same manager. So it was like one of his dudes came out. Hey, we have a we have another thirty five and that just got out of the UFC, kind of looking for a fight. And it just you know short notice. I'm used to the guy they call because things like that. Yeah, definitely. I'm always ready. Definitely, mate. And uh, one sided dominant victory on your on your first uh, time out uh, in, against Philip Masek. Um, how much did you enjoy making your first appearance within Octagon? Because obviously it's new promotion. Was there any nerves? Yeah, like that. I know there wasn't no nerves at all. I walked in not really knowing much about anything other than him being a, supposed to be a great grappler, yeah. one of the best grapplers out he- out here. And I've seen some of his groundwork, and it's very impressive. Hmm. But I knew my, like. If we're if we're gonna go to the ground, I am gonna dominate. And I went out there and actually handled handled that fight amazing. He went out there. I didn't. I feel like I. I don't think I even got hit. Took him down and it was full domination. And it just shows the level of grappling that I have when I come out here on a ten day notice against the number one guy and actually beat him in his best you know aspect of the game. So I'm yeah. I'm excited to. Get another show like that. I want to go out there, put my hands on him, take this guy down, put pressure on him, and then drown him. 
Yeah, definitely, mate. And you've previously mentioned, you know, you fight out of Extreme Couture. It's one of the teams you fight out of. People will most associate that at the minute with the current UFC middleweight champion of the world, but also the fighters like Chris Curtis and Julian Arosa. Um, what's mm. the atmosphere like on a day-to-day basis? And does training alongside, um, you know, world-class competition like yourself, but also these other guys, do you think that is a massive reason for the improvements that you can make? For sure. Uh, the level of that we have in that gym is incredible. Yeah. With you know Francis Ngano, Kurt Curtis, we have uh Sean Strickland just went out there and won a, won a world title yeah. <laughs> against one of the best bandwidth, you know, against one of the uh, best champions in the world. Yeah, it's pretty incredible the the level that Eric Nixon pushes us to be is is just our standard. That's that's the standard that we put and we're trying to make. And it's a no. It's, to tell you the truth, it feels like a like a like a normal day. You feel great, and you don't really really realize how good we have it until you go to other gyms and to go other places, and you just dominate other people. And it's like, and I wouldn't like, and it happens the opposite to other people. Some people think they're like the biggest fish, you know, in their yeah. gym, and they come out here and then get smoked by our amateurs. Yeah. And it's like different story i'm like whoa no one has ever done this to me that I've, I've heard that multiple times people come to the gym and i'm out and they you know they get me for a round and i take them down and i hold them and i beat them up and it's like and they're like like whoa i did like this never happens to me i'm like well different different pool here <laughs> we're yeah. diff- definitely a different ocean and like when everybody in the gym at extreme tour is a shark you know yeah. we li- i feel like we have one of the best gyms in the world out here out there and it's just incredible the the kind of gym that Eric Nixon and all the coaches out there could, you know, that made, it's just incredible. I'm pretty blessed to be able to be a part of it. Definitely. And as you mentioned there, Sean Strickland, just won middleweight champion of the world. Has, what's the atmosphere been like, you know, surrounding that and after that fight? Uh, It's been great. You know, Uh, Sean Strickland came back literally, I think the day after he had a little thing on his foot. I think (laughs) I'm kicking so much. Uh, Yeah. And then I think the following Tuesday, he was back at sparring. You know, wow. it's he. One of the biggest things that he said to the people out there is like, "Hey, even after your fights, you got to come back and help your teammates." And it's it's a huge family out in Street Patrol, and you know, everybody's there to help each other, to make each other better. No one's really trying out there trying to hurt each other. It's not. There's no ego into it. We go hard, but it's majority of the time we're we're there to make each other better. Yeah, and. That makes uh, perfect sense nowadays. So what I wanted to find out was why pick extreme in the first place. Because obviously, uh, you were born in Washington. I think I'm correct in mm-hmm. saying that. So then, how did you move over to a Las Vegas gym? What was the journey? Uh, like? The journey for that, I was going to school to get my bachelor's in finance at Menlo College up in California, and then a yeah. friend of mine, Brian Caraway, and then Misha Tate invited me out there to help him with her camp. Misha was a uh, former world champion for Strike Force, yeah. former world champion for the UFC, and she just needed help, you know, getting things ready. And I helped him a lot with the rest with the wrestling base and being a just good partner. And they were big mentors of me of mine that made me who I am today. You know, I'm very grateful for the family that I have in Las Vegas. Yeah, it was a it was a one way flight just to kind of figure it out, and I never left. <laughs> Definitely, mate. And as I previously mentioned in your introduction. Throughout your fights, however it's going, you're always smiling. Is that I was wondering, is that an intimidation tactic or is it just I'm always happy in there? I'm happy to be <sighs> doing the thing I love. I think I'm just happy to uh, do the thing that I love. It's yeah. ups and downs happen in life, but I'm very I try to be as grateful as possible. You know, there's so much other things that could go wrong, that like does go wrong, and then you know, it's it's the way you think about it. You know. Yeah. You, could, you could be doing you could be doing all those horrible things you could be doing this stuff and be mad about it or you could you know be grateful for the amazing life that you have now definitely mate. because it can always be worse yeah exactly mate and have you got any future goals you wouldn't mind sharing with us a future goal right now it's uh i'm i have this girlfriend in Bratislava named Viviana, and yeah. we're opening up at this new mm-hmm. wellness center here in Bratislava called Body Station Studio. So the yeah. goal right now after the fight is to focus on the company and help as much people as possible. We're bringing a bunch of technology from the States and from the other side of the world to be able to help people with just feeling better and making sure their mind is correct. 
that's an amazing c- contribution to society, mate. So congratulations on that. And I hope that all goes well in the future. Finally, from my half, Casavo, um, I've got two questions. How would you like to be remembered first off? And have you got any words for Ben Oedema before your upcoming fight next week? Uh, the way I want to be remembered, I want to be remembered as a person that always went out trying to help people. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm always, uh, you know, I try to be as positive as possible. But regardless of the fight, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's just a small blip of of a life that we do. You know, yeah. The fact that I'm, we're opening up this company is to help people, and I've always been a big believer in just helping people, especially their mind, especially with you know their mental aspect. And the fact that we're gonna go out here and help people is, I'm excited for it. Yeah. 100% mate. And have you got any words for Benno Adamia before next week? Uh, not at all. I No. You know, we're going to go out there, we're going to have some fun and I'm going to go out there with a W. Perfect mate. Well, thank you very much for taking the time out today. It's been massively appreciated. It's great to hear all the work you're doing behind the scenes with local communities. So a massive applause for that as well. And best of luck for next week. Thank you. Cheers mate. Thanks again. I'll stop recording now.